Paris, France, home of the finest restaurants and the greatest chefs in the world. All my life, I've wanted to be one of them. You may think that's a strange dream for a rat, but I always believe that with hard work and a little luck, it's only a matter of time before I'm discovered. Ratatouille, the latest animation from the hitmakers Pixar, opened at number one in the United States. Audiences clearly finding the tale of the gourmet rat Remy seasoned to popular taste. The makers of Ratatouille relished the happy task of researching the sights and sounds of working kitchens. The artists set out to capture as authentically as possible the actions and detailed images for the film's artwork. The bubbles in just baked bread, the ruby color of pouring wine. This kind of attention to research is just one of the fine ingredients of this food fest film. They definitely did a lot of research going to different kitchens and uh, in Paris, and so it's, it's kind of a combination of, of all of the different restaurants they visited. Brad Bird won an Oscar for The Incredibles and directed the critically acclaimed 1999 animation The Iron Giant. Bird loved the story of Ratatouille from the start, a rat that loves kitchens in a kitchen that hates rats. What can I do? I am a figment of your imagination. What? He's ruining the soup! You gotta tell someone that he's not... Listen, I just want you to know how honored I am to be studying under such a... No, you listen. I just want you to know exactly who you are dealing with. How many women do you see in this kitchen? Well, I... <laughs> Only me. Uh, Why do you think that is? Well, I... Because uh, haute cuisine oh. is an antiquated hierarchy built upon rules written by stupid old men. Rules designed to make it impossible for women to enter this world. But still I'm here. How did this happen? <laughs> because, well, because you... Uh, <laughs> Actually, a stated objective. We were, we were saying that when we were making it. You know, if we do our job right, people will be hungry after this movie. It's actually, I think, a really good date movie if you have reservations at a good restaurant afterwards. You, know, you will be hungry. John Lasseter, Pixar's chief creative officer, says Ratatouille shares the same theme as all Pixar stories. The main character goes on a journey of self-improvement, growing and changing. Pixar Animation Studios have accrued an impressive seven Academy Awards. In 2006, the Walt Disney Company bought out Pixar for a staggering $7.4 billion. Surprisingly, computer animation requires many of the same skills as traditional animation, an understanding of acting, anatomy, and human movement. To compete in a field demanding the highest originality, Pixar puts the creative education of its artists above everything else. The company has its own in-house professional development program, offering courses on painting, drawing, sculpting and creative writing. Is I think that the world who knows our films, they know the characters, they know the story, and they know the way the films look, but they don't realize how much gorgeous artwork is created you know, for, to, to, to create these films and to inspire these films. None of this artwork appears on the screen in the final film, but 100% of this inspires what's on the screen in the final film. It's sort of disturbing. <laughs> I have a what, you? I have a rash. You have a rash? No, no, no. I have this this tiny, uh, a little, little, a tiny chef who tells me what to do. Oh, him? He's nobody. Not nobody. He is part of the kitchen. Yeah, he's a plongeur or something. He washes dishes or takes out the garbage. He doesn't cook. But he could. Uh, <laughs> no. How do you know? What do I always say? Anyone can cook. 
Well, yeah, anyone can. That doesn't mean that anyone should. who's trapped they expect me to cook it again I mean I'm not ambitious I wasn't trying to cook I was just trying to stay out of trouble you're the one who was getting fancy with the spices what did you throw in there oregano no what ro uh, rosemary that's a spice isn't it rosemary this lesson is called ratio and proportion part two and we're gonna be covering standard five we're actually preparing for this standard and the objective for this lesson is that you're going to be able to use ratios and proportions to solve problems. All right. uh, before we really begin on this, though, we need to do a quick review of Pythagorean's theorem. And you remember, Pythagorean's theorem is something that we use on a right triangle. Okay. And you can see here that I have my right triangle with sides A, B, and C. And Pythagorean's theorem says that I can add the two legs of that triangle. Okay, so I can add a squared plus b squared and set it equal to c squared. And a and b are going to be the two legs that make up my 90 degree angle. Okay, those are the only two sides that I can put in for a and b. And these two are actually interchangeable. I could have placed those in either order here. Um, but those are the only two that go here. C is always going to be the hypotenuse, which is the side that's opposite that 90 degree angle. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at an example here, and we'll just want run through one quick one quick problem. Um, so we have our our right triangle with a side of three, a side of four, and a side of x, and we want to solve this um, this right triangle for the length of x. So what we're going to do is we would plug in our formula, or our links into the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So a is 3. So we end up with 3 squared. And then b is 4. So we end up with plus 4 squared equals c squared, which is x. So we have 3 squared plus 4 squared equals x squared. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, then we simplify everything and we actually and, and all that. So we get 3 squared, which is 9, plus 4 squared, which is 16, equals x squared. And <clears throat> when we add 9 and 16, we get 25 equals x squared. And then in order to get rid of our exponent here, we have to square root each side. And when we do that, we end up with x equals the square root of 25, which is... 5. And that gives us the answer for x. All right? And this is the Pythagorean theorem in a nutshell as a review. All right? So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can actually use proportions um, to solve for problems. Okay? So here we're given two triangles, triangle ABC, and one of those lengths is 3 inches. The other one we're given x and z. All right, and in our second triangle, triangle DEF, we're given an eight inch length, a side that's W and a side that's Y, okay? And what we wanna do is we wanna find the lengths of each triangle if the ratio of triangle DEF to ABC is two to one ratio, all right? So what we're gonna do is the first thing is Notice that right here it says triangle DEF to triangle ABC, okay? And our ratio is 2 to 1. So remember that this 2 colon 1 can be rewritten as 2, 2, 1, okay? Which corresponds with this statement right here, okay? This triangle DEF to triangle ABC. So this 2 is going to go with triangle DEF and one goes with triangle ABC so when we try to use a proportion here 
you can see that if we try to find the length of df, okay, which we know is w units, okay, we would place w over its corresponding part on the smaller triangle, okay, which is three inches. So we would have w over three equals two over one, which is our ratio. Okay, and the reason that we did that is because this two goes with triangle DEF and we have the length of DEF on top here. Okay, so those two go together. One corresponds with triangle ABC. So there's our one. And we have of the length of the small triangle ABC down below. So you can see that the corresponding denominators and corresponding numerators pair up as well. Okay, so then in order to do this, to solve this, we would want to uh, use the cross product properties. So we cross multiply W times 1, we get W, and then when we set it equal to our other cross product, 3 times 2, so W equals 6. Okay, and then over here, now we, now we want to solve for x, so we do, remember it's our large triangle to our, big, to our small triangle, so it's 8 over x because those two sides correspond together. So 8 over x equals our ratio, which is 2 to 1, and we would cross multiply. So 8 times 1 is 8, equals 2 times x, so we divide both sides by 2. So x equals 4, okay? So we have two sides of our triangle, and what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to rewrite these, these links in here. So this w is equals 6, and x equals 4, okay? So now we want to solve for y and z. And the only way that we can do that right now, because we don't have a length of either one, okay, is to use Pythagorean's theorem. So, let's look at our uh, large triangle first. Okay. So, Pythagorean's theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So, a is going to be 6. So, we got 6 squared plus b squared, which is 8, because those are the two sides that make up our legs. That gives us a and b. So 8 squared equals c squared, which in this case is going to be y. So y squared. So 6 squared gives us 36, plus 8 squared, which is 64, equals y squared. 64 plus 36 gives us 100 equals y squared. So we square root each side and we get y equals 10. Okay, so we have the solution for y there. So let's go ahead and plug that in into our triangle up here. So y equals 10. All right, now we want to do the same thing that we just did except we want to use our small triangle. So for this, a is going to be 3 inches and B is going to be 4. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A we said was 3, so 3 squared, and B was 4. And C was going to be Z, so Z squared. So then 3 squared gives us 9. 4 squared gives us 16. And then that's equal to Z squared. So 9 plus 16 give us 25 equals z squared. We square root each side to get rid of that exponent of 2. So z equals 5. So then we're going to take that and plug that back in to our triangle up top here. So z equals 5. All right. And we have solved for all the unknown links of each triangle. All right. Um, this one may be kind of confusing, so um, don't feel bad if you ask for assistance, okay? Um, it usually takes one or two problems to really get this one uh, and understand how to do it. 
Okay. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can actually apply ratios to a real world problem. Okay. And our problem here is we want to find the width of the actual painting. All right. Now, you can see here that we have our actual painting. Our width is X and the length is 42 inches. And then we have a photo of the painting, which is a width of 1.25 inches and a width of 4.375 inches. Okay. So I wrote you guys a little, um, a little uh, proportion here so you can see how you would plug things in and see how the corresponding parts relate to each other. So in our first ratio, we have the width of the actual pa uh, painting. Okay, and our width is going to be x like that. So we have x over the width of the photo, which is 1.25 inches. Okay, notice that I paired my widths up. Okay, so I have the width over the width. Okay, that's exactly how we want to do it when we solve. Uh, when we write our proportions out. Okay, now I'm going to set that equal to the length of my actual, which is 42 inches, over the length of my photo, which is 4.375 inches. Okay, and at this point, I have my proportion. Now I can solve my proportion. So we're going to cross multiply. When we do that, we get x times 4.375, which gives us 4.375x equals our other cross product, which is 1.25 times 42. And when I simplify this down, I get 4.375x equals 1.25 times 42 and I get 52.5 okay now I need to divide both sides by 4.375 and when I do that these 4.375's over here cancel out leaving me with x equals 52.5 divided by 4.375, which is 12 inches. Okay, and we have the width of our actual painting. All right, and this concludes the lesson at this time. So if you have any questions, go ahead and ask for assistance before you uh, really dig deep into this worksheet. Um, if not, go ahead and get started and have fun.